In just four weeks, you'll be running faster, more efficiently, and with more horsepower than ever before. But as you will soon learn, it's not necessarily the exercises that leads to your success, but the precise sets, reps, and weights. So take notes and pay close attention. What you are about to learn comes from this paper, which randomized 26 regional and national level runners into three different strength training groups and saw significant improvements in their running economy, which is running more efficiently at sub-maximal speeds. And this is perfect for you runners wanting to run half marathons and full marathon distances. They also saw improvements in VO2 max. Think of this like increasing the size of your engine. And for some more tangible results, they saw improvements in their 1500 meter and 5k performances. So let's just take a moment to appreciate the magnitude of this. These are already elite runners who usually have 16 week training programs trying to shave off seconds off their personal best. And if a four week program has the benefit on these athletes, imagine what it could do for us recreational runners who have a greater capacity to improve. The three strength training programs assigned to these runners included the high intensity interval training group, also known as the HIT group, the heavy resistance group, and the explosive resistance group. They all showed improvements, but in different areas of running. So it's important that you learn all three programs, and then based on your upcoming goals or weaknesses, you can assign a four week plan to whichever group is more suitable. The heavy strength group is the one I think you should pay most attention to. They showed an improvement in their 5K time trial and overall running economy. In other words, this will fine tune your engine to run more efficiently at sub-maximal speeds, which is highly recommended for you long distance runners. The exercises they did were a barbell squat down to parallel, a leg extension exercise, a leg flexion exercise, the leg press, and two calf raise exercises. Unfortunately, they didn't specify the two calf raise exercises, but I'll assume they were meaning a single leg standing calf raise and a single leg seated calf raise. Now, before you start doing these exercises, the sets and reps make all the difference. So listen closely. Participants did three sets with a rep range of four to six. Apart from the leg press, each runners started with a weight of around about 30% of their body weight. And they kept increasing by five to 10% until they reached their six repetition maximum. This just means they could do six reps, but couldn't possibly do a seventh. That's pretty heavy. I put this to the test with the leg extension exercise. 30% of my body weight is 20 kilograms, which felt pretty light for me. So I increased by 10% every set until I reached 35 kilograms. I could do six, but couldn't reach the full range of movement for my seventh rep. This meant I was at the right weight range and I recommend you do the same for all of these other exercises. However, once achieving six reps becomes easier, the paper instructs you to increase the weight by another five to 10% and continue to work within a rep range of four to six. But a warning to you runners, this is heavy weight we're talking about. So if you aren't experienced with these type of movements, then start lighter and let your body adapt. Research shows that you can still run faster by doing similar exercises with a rep range of eight to 10. However, once you are proficient at these movements, you will get greater results by progressing the weight and lowering the reps. Now, I said earlier they did three sets per exercise, but this was only for the first two weeks. Week three, they increased to four sets, and then week four, they increased to five sets with a three minute rest between each set. Now you might be puzzled as to why lifting heavy will help improve running endurance. After all, lifting heavy is meant to increase muscle size and make you heavier, which isn't favorable for runners. Well, actually putting on muscle is really hard, especially since the strength training groups only performed these twice a week and were asked to still maintain their same dietary intake. So if you stick to these parameters, you won't put on excess muscle, but you will recruit more muscle fibers to produce force, increase anaerobic energy production, and most importantly, strengthen and stiffen your tendons. All of these adaptations convert into running more efficiently, 
which is why this type of strength training saw superior results in running economy while also running quicker 5k distances. What this group didn't improve was their VO2 max. I'll get to that shortly. But an honorable mention goes to the explosive group who also saw improvements in their 5k performance without much improvement in running economy. However, this group made enormous gains in their leg press strength. In fact, their one rep maximum was on average 100 kilos heavier after four weeks. Like I said, this is just an honorable mention because it might not be that desirable for most of you runners. But there are a few of you out there who are hybrid athletes, including myself, and because I'll be preparing for my second high rocks race in a few months, I'll definitely be putting a four to six week explosive block in my training plan. Here is a quick description. The participants did the exact same exercises, but were asked to do 12 reps instead of six. In addition, they were asked to perform the up phase, also known as the concentric phase, in a quick explosive manner. Everything else was identical to the heavy strength group. By the way, this research paper and every other paper that I discuss on this channel is available to you Run Smarter Scholars. You can access it through my Google Drive along with hundreds of other papers by going to the link in the description. Okay, now we draw our attention to the high intensity interval group, which showed a 3.5% boost in their VO2 max, while also improving their 1500 meter time trial. Unlike running economy, which focuses on fine tuning your engine, improving your VO2 max is equivalent to increasing the size of your engine. Here is what you need to do. Firstly, gather some baseline data from an incremental treadmill test. Set a 1% incline, and after a 10 minute warm up, set the speed to 14 kilometers per hour, or six and a half miles per hour, and hold this pace for three minutes. Next, increase the speed by one kilometer, or 0.6 miles per hour, every three minutes, and keep repeating this until you reach exhaustion. Document your fastest speed, which for me was 18 kilometers per hour. While I know this isn't as accurate as VO2 max tests in the lab, for convenience sake, let's just say that this is your velocity at your VO2 max. The next day, after an adequate warm up, set your incline to 1% again and do an all out exertion test at the speed you documented. This pace burned me up really quickly and I could only last four minutes. So by now you have two data points, your velocity at VO2 max and your time to exhaustion. Now it's time to mimic the hit group who greatly improved their VO2 max in just four weeks. Twice a week, you're going to do a hit workout. Perform a one kilometer warm up at your own selected pace, then run your VO2 max velocity and hold this for 60% of your time to exhaustion. So for me, it's running at 18 kilometers per hour at around two and a half minutes. Then you need a recovery bout, which is running at 50% of your previous speed, which for me will be nine kilometers per hour at the same duration as the faster set. Repeat this for five rounds to complete your HIT workout. Now that we have the strength side covered, let me share a bonus tip if you want to run faster. It comes from this study where participants honed in on a very particular skill and in just three weeks could run 48 seconds per kilometer faster or 78 seconds faster per mile without any increase in effort. Essentially running faster without feeling as tired. I know it sounds too good to be true for just a three week intervention, but I break it all down in this video. So click on it now and I'll see you there.